The global financial system is truly on the verge of a breakdown. All major global economies, the Eurozone, US, China and Japan, every government and the central banks and their fiat-based monetary system are about to reach the mathematically implosion. And as you know, thank God for that, math is probably one of the only things in this world that does not lie. You see, so once a country, or a borrower for that matter, is no longer able to pay back at least the interest on the outstanding loan, let alone not even being able to pay back the principal amount. This, ladies and gentlemen, is when you know that you have hit the end of the road. You see, it isn't over until the fat lady sings. But let me tell you something. She is sure getting ready. It's time for you to take off your rose-colored glasses, smell the coffee, because it's time for number one to teach you yet another lesson. We're currently witnessing the United States losing its dominant position as the world's number one powerhouse. Well, it's much worse than just losing its number one position. It wouldn't be so bad just to be number two, wouldn't it? But we are in such a bad situation that the United States, basically all other Western countries, governments, are close to bankruptcy. You see, the consequences of this is that we are in the midst of a global currency war. And as we know, our politicians, they don't want to blame themselves. Oh no, right? Why would they? So they always have to find someone else to blame. Politics is basically just a blame game. But in this case, they're blaming it all on China. Now, for the longest time, I've said that the global financial system, especially the US economy, is poised to crash. But surely it would help the government to find someone else to blame, wouldn't it? Now, I have for the longest time told everyone to be cautious because the crash can come out of nowhere. We won't know when it's going to start. We won't know what it's going to trigger it. But, you see, the so-called black swan event is impossible to predict. For those of you who does not know what a black swan event is, well, it's an incident, it's an event that will trigger a financial disaster, that will have a domino effect, that will then spill over to the rest of the economy. Say the economy, the global economy, as well as in this case, very crystal clear example of how this could impact the global cryptocurrency market. But first, I want to welcome you to Crypto Never Sleeps, and today we're going to talk about the perfect storm that could be triggered by Evergrande and Tether. By the way, both based in Hong Kong. My name is Nico Harachi, and in case you are new to this channel, well then please hit like, smash, subscribe, so that you can be notified every time we upload new videos, so that you can protect your wealth, preserve your wealth, and ultimately increase your wealth. My name is Nico Harachi, and I am no one. Even though we're seeing Bitcoin and the blockchain industry as being the future of finance, and I truly believe in that. However, the crypto markets are not immune to economic uncertainty from the traditional markets. And Bitcoin's volatility is very much linked to the global news cycle. Now, of course, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies can thrive when we're seeing market uncertainty. But when crypto assets become collateral damage in a money-hungry conflict, well, let me tell you something, all markets will take a hit. But now let's go in and look at the traditional point of view on the macro level. Evergrande is China's second largest real estate developer, and they have altogether more debt than 300 billion, which is approximately the equivalent of China's GDP 2% which according to recent reports, Evergrande are not going to be able to pay back their interest, which expires on September the 20th. This means that this is just another, not another, but this is a catastrophe that could very much be compared, or perhaps even bigger, than the Lehman Brothers crisis. Now investors therefore seeing a very gloomy end to the Evergrande story. Perhaps not so grand at all, huh? ever small or ever bad. Nevertheless, if this company is going to go under, it will be one of the biggest corporate collapses in our time. Perhaps the biggest in history of time. Now, according to a CNN report, Evergrande stock 
did drop by 85% already in 2021. So what is the company hoping for? Well, they are hoping for a bank bailout. Not a bank bailout, but a Beijing bailout. <laughs> the Evergrande collapse could be the biggest test China's financial system has ever faced. Moreover, traders, investors, and analysts have agreed on one thing. Evergrande going bankrupt will affect international markets because they owe, and this is important, Evergrande owe money to around 171 domestic banks and 121 other financial firms. Adding to that, Asian institutional investors have higher exposure to digital assets. A Fidelity investment survey shows that 71% of Asian institutional investors allocate part of their portfolio to crypto assets. Though a dip in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange means companies partnered, invested, exposed with to Evergrande, they could be forced to liquidate some of their positions for cash. And obviously, they would most likely liquidate those positions that are in profit, most likely crypto. But now let's take a deeper look why and how Tether could be a dangerous beginning to a long, long market crash of crypto. Tether, as you might know, is the largest stablecoin by market cap. However, as many map perhaps didn't know, it's a Hong Kong based company, a Hong Kong based cryptocurrency. It is operating in the same backyard as Evergrande, which makes the company susceptible, susceptible to becoming collateral in the economic war. You see, Tether did enter the spotlight after concern surfaced that the company owns, and listen to this, commercial papers. They own various commercial paper CPs or certificates of deposits to back up their USDT. Now, according to Reuters, Tether did announce that it did not hold any commercial papers issued by Evergrande. However, it's not to underestimate or it's not to be scared that Tether might still have exposure to Chinese obligations or other forms of investments that could be tied to the Chinese government. And what's more, obviously, Tether, they say they cannot disclose counterparty information because they are in a commercially sensitive business. But before we end, I want to give you my two cents on the dollar. Now, it might be that Tether is not directly exposed to any obligations coming from Evergrande. It can be. But nevertheless, it was a bit of a surprise for me, and I guess I just was unaware of that or didn't remember it, that Tether is a Hong Kong-based stablecoin. Now, I've actually lived in Hong Kong for quite some time. I lived there three to four years. And I can tell you one thing. Hong Kong is small. The financial, say, financial elite, even smaller. Now, I would be surprised if Tether didn't have any exposure. And when Tether was asked, of course, they said they couldn't give any information. So from my point of view, even if they're not directly exposed to Tether, I mean to Evergrande, they have 50% of their underlying assets are held in commercial papers, short-term bonds. And, I'm, and many of these bonds are actually in today's world it doesn't matter if it's government bonds or if it's even you know company government uh, um, enterprise bonds because we are in a very very let's say let's say unstable economic situation and if we're going to see any kind of spill or any kind of black swan event besides the fact that we have all been in lockdown since the pandemic this could be maybe this event, not itself, very much be the beginning of something that could last a bit long. In case you enjoyed it, well then please hit like, smash, subscribe. And we also do live streams almost daily. I hope to see you there. And as always, Kitty loves you.